Good evening, good evening, Emmanuel everywhere. We are, are back again with a Monday Night Live and we have a special guest with us today. And before I introduce him though, I want to, I, I, it, it pains me to, it's a great praise break moment, but the example that I'm gonna use pains me as a Raider fan. But I'm gonna use, oh. the, I'm gonna use this praise break moment because I think it's very essential that we have something that we can shout about um, before we get into the world. We do it every week. So what, what do you have to, be, to give thanks to God about? Here's the thought. On uh, October 15th, 2012, Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos are down by 24 points at halftime against the Chargers. First place in the division is on the line. Led by their QB, they come back with 35 unanswered points in the second half, and their QB, Peyton Manning, only had one incompletion. It was a near perfect half. Enter the word near and your shout today. Who has been at the helm of your life's drive when you were down and looked defeated? I can tell you one who has never had an incompletion. His strategy regarding your life has always been perfect. And when the enemy thought he had you, he came to you through his word and his spirit and said, trust me, the game is not over. That is for somebody today that Jesus is perfect in all of his ways masterful in everything he has done. His strategies for our life give us a reason to give thanks and glory to God, even in this season. And so all I'm asking you today for your praise break, who's your QB? Hmm. All right, now let's get into this. Chris, I, I, it pained me to have to do that, but I had to give you some, I had to give you some love on that one uh, for your Denver Broncos. So we have with us uh, our, our resident pastors, associate, I don't even know what your title is, but he's the he's the, he's the pastor's associate for Emmanuel Baptist Church, consulting extraordinaire, Reverend Chris Gilmore is with us. Now I can tell you right now, he is the husband of his lovely wife Tanya. He is mm. father to a 13 and a five year old. But Chris, just for us, just give us a few moments. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself, where you were born and how you were raised and where you come from? Just give us a little bit, Emmanuel, everywhere, real fast if you can. Oh, sure. Well, Reverend Joel, thank you for the Bronco shout out. <laughs> I can tell you that is the most consistent video that shows up online when thinking about the Denver Broncos. I was shocked when they got Peyton Manning. I was hoping that his injury wasn't going to take him out. And um, I've got my Super Bowl 50 oh, shirt I see. on I right see. now. <laughs> um, and so I was I was born and raised in Colorado. And that is why the Broncos, um, even now, as, as horrible as they have been, um, I, I love them. Uh, my sweet wife uh, from Ukraine, when I first met her, I said Denver Broncos. And she said, who? <laughs> because she grew up in Europe. And it's all about soccer, what they would say, uh, football. Yes. I would say, that's not real football. But she said, hey, that's a world sport. And I said, I know, but that's not <laughs> football. Yeah. And so... Uh, born and raised there. I grew up in the church, uh, eventually felt called to ministry at, at the age of 18 and wow. uh, left to go to seminary in Kentucky, uh, kind of went around, um, ended up uh, pastoring my first church in basically inner city Colorado prior to going to seminary. And uh, wow. when I say inner city, uh, at one point was the lowest income neighborhood in the state of Colorado. Um, just wow. the people who were um in and out of uh, jail, uh, you know, drug addiction, alcohol abuse, all over, mm -hmm. single parent families, just struggling, struggling, mm -hmm. struggling, struggling. And I can say, honestly, it was chaos. Mm -hmm. um, I had to personally call uh, the police on people because they showed up high or drunk. Um, oh, yeah. But I can say, I can say without a doubt, when you have a group of people that all they have is Christ, um, mm -hmm. powerful things happen. And so that ministry was, was just a blessing. Uh, you know, uh, have uh, met my wife, Tanya, when I was studying at seminary, uh, and we will celebrate 10 years this Thursday. Oh, uh, wow. 10 years of marriage. So. Anniversary. It's on the way. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. What awesome. So, that is so 
Awesome. Thank you for that, uh, Reverend. Uh, we appreciate you coming with us. Now, you preached a message Sunday. We want to jump right in it because I'm so excited yes. about it. Uh, you are you partnered with Pastor in the Born series. Yes. And uh, you took on joy. Joy is born and joy being mm -hmm. a thing. And so there was so much that you said that I want to tap into. Um, let me reiterate the, the scripture so that we can you know, all be on the same page. Luke, Luke chapter 2, uh, 8 through 14. And it reads, that night, they were, that night there, were, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. So the angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people, the Savior. Yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this yeah. sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Yeah. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God, saying, glory to God in highest, and peace on earth and those with whom God is pleased. I think when we think about this text, Rev, it's just one of those ones that uh, exudes uh, the, the meaning of Christmas. I mean, I, you know, I grew up in the church, so, you know, when you read the Christmas plays and everything, this is one of the ones, you know, if you're watching Charlie yes. Brown, this is the one Linus, Linus gets on his soapbox with his blanket and he yeah. tells this story. Yeah. So, this is a very, very uh, key text for Christmas. Um, one of the things that you you, you mentioned um, was a reminder um, about us and our vision, seeing things as clearly as we should. Can we talk more about when we're looking at scriptures? How do you? How does God reshape your vision? Because we, we want to use all these to help people further. What can we be doing sure. this week? A lot of folk got bad vision and they don't want to admit it. You know, I mean, I think you talked about yeah. you know not being able to see like we could. And you know, I remember the first time I realized I needed reading glasses. You know, it's just like sometimes we don't see things spiritually the way we should. Can we talk to that a little bit? Yes. So I think personally, uh, first of all, as a as a Christian, it's really easy for me to come to the text with some, some preconceived notions of how it should be interpreted. And so it's easy for me to miss what is God trying to tell me here? Mm -hmm. Not what do I want to hear? Not, not what do I want it to say? But mm -hmm. what is God really trying to tell me there? And then just pastorally, and I think anybody who's preached a sermon, yourself included, um, we have to be confronted with the text. And mm -hmm. so... I have to come at the text, not only for God, what are you wanting to say to Emmanuel, but God, what are you wanting to say to me? Where, where am I not seeing what you want me to see? And so um, I, I think what we all want to think is, no, I'm just, I'm just listening. I'm just listening to God. I, I, I want him to, to speak. Uh, but I think more often than not, um, if we were to be completely honest with ourselves, we we've made up our minds, you know, and now, now, of course, there are some things that we can know for sure. So we want to come at the text and know that when it's talking about the Savior being born, it that that's talking about Jesus. And mm -hmm. so we there there are certainly some things we want to know. But but as we as we go throughout our week mm -hmm. and we talk about having poor vision. It's so easy to say amen or, or for me to say, uh, Lord, you spoke, um, you, you opened my eyes to the text. Now I'm moving on to the next thing um, mm -hmm. without allowing God to open our eyes now to to see clearly the reality of the fact that God's word is living and active. We are told mm -hmm. Hebrews 412. So this text mm -hmm. is wanting to uh, enlighten our eyes to how is that going to affect um, my interactions with my family, my boss, my coworkers? Mm -hmm. um, how is the reality of Jesus's birth on earth going to help us to see the people around us as the very ones that Jesus came 
not only to be born for, but uh, ultimately to die for. But we know, obviously, didn't end there, right? That he was raised from the dead, that he's ascended on high. And this is the Jesus we're talking about. He is alive right now. And so uh, for me, it's how does that affect my interactions with our twins or our 13-year-olds? So to have two five-year-olds and a a teenager in the house, it's, whoa, you know, (laughs) perfect storm, some might say. But, you know, we're... We know many, many people who have more kids than we do, uh, have had harder struggles than we've ever had, but that's got to affect uh, my vision for even how I see my children, not as constantly needing discipline, mm-hmm. but ones that Jesus came for. So sure. I think those are some of the things that we can be thinking about. Um, you know, I, I read in a book and I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to not remember who said it, but we've always got to see even our children as not just our children, but uh, potential brothers or sisters in Christ someday. I'm actually going to say that. I think that was Dr. Timothy Paul Jones. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just that really helped me. So Wow. Wow. That is awesome. So when we talk about your vision, I kind of want to stay there a little bit and take it to one of the next things that you talked about on Sunday. And that was living in this season of tension, Um, Mm. joy joy being found in the midst of pain and grief or in the midst of calamity. I think you mentioned your wife and, and, and the near miss of Ukraine and the war. There's so much going mm-hmm. on. People have so much tension in them. Finding joy in the midst of pain and grief, it requires us kind of to change our vision and vantage points at some mm-hmm. point to understand that joy was born even in the middle of, of this season you know what i mean this is a yeah. season yes that's yes. that's different for people you know we're grieving at the church we lost one of our deacons that you mentioned and so how how do you what, what are your thoughts on that change of vantage point and how do we navigate the tension of this season how do how can we do that this week yes um so i think pastor jason really spoke into my life as we were talking about this idea of how we view joy so it's not it's not joy in the absence of grief, but joy in the midst of it. And mm-hmm. so um, when we think about tension, I mean, we all can say politics, right? So mm-hmm. so in, in our house, of course, it's, you know, how both sides view the Ukraine uh, in full scale invasion by Russia. And so mm-hmm. there's I mean, there's there's clear political divides, even though there's widespread mm-hmm. bipartisan support. Mm-hmm. But I think for. Uh, many, even if they are connected to Ukraine, like it's it's more personal in the sense of how terrible the last couple of elections have been so divisive. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we've got issues of of race, and then we have whole denominations and churches debating on whether or not that's even a valid conversation. And so how do we have the joy in the midst of talking to people who are are very clearly on the opposite end? of our viewpoint on a given situation. I, I think we have to see with the, the, the heaven-bound joy found in the gospel every situation that, mm-hmm. that, that we struggle with these things. We want them to be fixed because it's, it's both a reflection of the fall. Mm-hmm. In other words, it's broken because sin broke it. Mm-hmm. But it's also a reflection of our desire for that ultimate redemption where uh, you and I are not going to be having these conversations anymore. You're not going to be having these these conversations with Pastor Jason anymore because Christ is ultimately going to return and everything's going to be redeemed. Yeah. And so we have to recognize that those things exist as both a tension of the fall and a tension of the desire for redemption. So I think we really desire for reconciliation, for example, mm-hmm. with somebody who's obviously on the opposite side of the political aisle and, and, and we just got off the phone with them or we saw their Facebook post and we engaged and it blew up. And um, yeah, I still haven't seen that happen in a good way. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so we, we want those things to be absent mm-hmm. because we're longing for our heavenly home, but we're not mm-hmm. there yet. So that's, that's, that's the tension we live in. Yeah. So we strive for that reconciliation. We strive to, Resolve that tension while knowing that 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 God has us in it for our mm-hmm. growth mm-hmm. and 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 for his, his glory ultimately 
-hmm. for an opportunity to have a gospel conversation or reflect the gospel to that person who we'd rather not engage with. And, and, and mm -hmm. truthfully, there are those times where we just, like, I know in our lives, we've had to say, I've just got to disengage from this person for now because anytime I engage with them, they bring it up, they say something. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about it anymore. But, but ultimately, I believe that God wants to restore that in, in, in a picture of, of what he's done now for the gospel and how the gospel is mm -hmm. going to ultimately redeem everything. Redeem everything. You, you gave me something key there about that I'm that I I'm, I'm going to hold on to because I think I I, I see a connection there. Is that really in the midst of tension, we who have Christ are the joy. We yes. carry the we carry the joy. So yes. in essence, you know when when I ask the question, how do we change the vantage point? We are the vantage point. Mm. We are we are. The the balance to change the tide. We are the ones that are supposed to go out and 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 change the countenance of somebody else by exuding yes. the joy that we have in Christ. So it kind of goes with why should we be walking around with our heads down all the time when we know mm. that that Christ is so much bigger. You know what I mean? It's kind of yes. like yes, you know, it's kind of like one of those things we've seen him do so many great things that you just can't hang your head down all the time thinking that it's going to end up bad. All right. You've got to have, you know, the courage to stand. That you know, that that I love the mm -hmm. quote that you gave from Russell Moore. That kind of leads me to my next question: Is um, much of what we fear is not because we don't think we can endure what scares us most. Much of what we fear is rooted in the mystery of not knowing what's around mm -hmm. us. I, I love that quote. And so, my, my next question to you is: Why do you think people fear the heavenly? When the angels appeared, they were afraid. I have my own thought. Maybe it was the bright light, but maybe if you see the angels, it's oftentimes an indication of bad news. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. You know what I mean? If you see in the angels, I mean something else. It means it's time to go. For, for mm. many of us, that's our thought process. So, what what do you think about that? Why do you think we fear the heavenly? And 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 let's just talk about fear in general, because there are many people that need to overcome fear. Um, in order to move forward. Yes, uh, I, I love what you said, because I think we forget that um, it's not always good news that angels bring in scripture. You know, we, we tend to focus on the good, and, and I think we, we recognize the good, but I think you made a great point that, that is speaking to my heart now, um, uh, the uniqueness of this situation, um, mm -hmm. because it's not always good. And so, I think when we think about uh, fearing the heavenly, I think there's just there's a kind of mystery. I like go back to Dr. Moore's quote that when it's heavenly, we don't know what's around the corner most of the time. Mm -hmm. I, I would say we we almost never do because, I, truthfully, me us being at a manual that wasn't mm -hmm. around the corner for us. Yeah, it's not like I didn't want it, but mm -hmm. uh, it because I. Because we kind of always talked about at least wanting to attend Emmanuel sometimes when Pastor Jason and I became friends. And then mm -hmm. I got to preach, which was just such a, a joy. I talk mm -hmm. about joy. That was just an amazing, amazing experience to be part of what God is doing and to interact with the people in that way. But there was an unknown element even going up to it. You know, how mm -hmm. is this how is this going to be received? There's that, mm -hmm. again, going back to tension. Mm -hmm. I want to prepare well but i don't want to get in the way of god mm -hmm. right and so it, it, it's around the corner and i don't think anybody on this feed I, I, I would say all of us our day did not go like we expected it today mm -hmm. there was a number of things that happened today that we did not expect and that's mm -hmm. scary and i think there's always an element when we think about the heavenly is our desire to want to control the situation yeah. Um, and, and, and so, um, you know, we take the shepherds that didn't, they didn't expect that. Mm -hmm. Um, we don't get any indication that they opposed it. I mean, I took some, I, I, I asked for a little bit of levity on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just speculating like, mm -hmm. I, he didn't have a manger. I'm not going to go. He's not in a manger. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm hearing my own voice being mm -hmm. that guy in the back, um, saying, he says, no, no, guys, guys, stop, stop, stop. We're, we're all 
we're all hallucinating the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's that there's that unknown yeah. aspect, and and you know, fear uh, fear, fear in general is it, different for everybody because you know my my five year old son is fearless. <laughs> he is fearless. So he, his first real experience in a pool, he sees his uh, well now thirteen but not thirteen at the time my brother jumping in he didn't know how to swim and i can't tell you how many times we had to not let him jump off the side into the deep end when he's swimming in a live vest and going like like, Nathaniel, you don't know he's not going to judge it right he's going to slide but Mm -hmm. fear less fear Mm -hmm. less but Mm -hmm. we all kind of grow out of that you know and because we start to understand like a five-year-old doesn't my body can't do certain things or it's going to break he doesn't have that right now. He, he just doesn't. And so um, we almost back ourselves into a corner thinking, well, it's, I, I just don't know. It's around the corner. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and that, that could be yeah. something as simple as a conversation with somebody, an invitation mm-hmm. to church, a gospel yeah. conversation, yeah. Or, or, or stepping up to serve at, you know, at Emmanuel or somewhere else where you've never done it before. Um, it's terrifying because you've never done it before, but that nudge, you just can't escape it. And so yeah. you just don't know how it's going to go. And, yeah. and so, and, and that I think goes back to control. It's just, we, we can't control heaven. We can't control God um, as yeah. much as we want to. And I think that goes back to one of your early questions is coming. We want to control what the text says to us rather than God dictating to us what he actually wants us to know, to mm-hmm. hear, to see. Mm-hmm. So, Man, major. You know, and I, I hear you when you talked about not, you know, not knowing that, realizing that, that our days didn't go the way they, mine certainly didn't. I can't think of anybody whose day went the way they wanted it to go. But, but also, you're reminding me, and you reminded us on Sunday about detours, that God is a God that that provides detours, and there's a reason. So there's a reason for even your detour that led you to Emmanuel. But isn't it so awesome that, 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 how do we, we, we need to learn again how to find joy in detours? You know, there's nothing worse when you have to go a long way someplace and, you, and you're waiting and you're, you're on this detour road and you're like, man, I wish I can get there faster. Or I just want to get there faster. And oftentimes we, we don't want to wait on God, but there is a joy that we should have in the midst of a detour. Uh, and I think you reminded me of that, that God is, you reminded us all of that, that there is even joy found in the midst of our detours, he still mm-hmm. was born. Joy was still born, mm-hmm. you know? And I think that um, as we come to, you know, come to a close of this, the last, last thing I want to touch on is your close. Um, and it is, you know, joy to all people, Jews and Gentile. Mm-hmm. Peace on earth to those whom God is pleased with are those that accepted him. Who are the mm-hmm. people? You know, joy to all people. And I just love that as a close, that no one is exempt. He was born, Mm -hmm. the scripture, for all. Yeah. To all people. And can we speak to that a little bit further as we we kind of wrap wrap up where we're going with this and what people can be doing this week? Remind them. Let's remind people that they are part of the all. (laughs) Yeah. 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 It's... uh... Joel, it's just, I don't think that I've ever had a conversation with a person about the gospel and regretted it. Hmm. You know, in other words, I don't, I have never in my life shared with somebody and said that was not a good use of my time. Now I can say there are things that I said to people that I wish I hadn't said, you know, when I, when I, first really started following Christ, I had a lot of compassion, a lot of zeal, um, not a lot of wisdom. And so I, I remember alienating uh, a guy uh, who I was good friends with at work, who I knew was Muslim, and just, and I just, I just laid into him one day. And it, it took a long time to get him back, you know, because um, he, he, he just, it, it was my fault. Um, but the gospel is for him. Yes. You know, the, the, the desire to have him turn to the, to the one true God, the 
out of the Bible. That was not wrong. Um, and, and so I, I think that in this season, especially that people are more willing than we want to admit to talk about Jesus Christ. Hmm. And if it's something as simple as I'm going to church um, on Christmas, especially Christmas day, like in our, in our context, I'm glad that we're having church on Christmas day. And I know there's a lot of debates and Mm -hmm. I see a lot of online uh, shaming over churches who are canceling. And I'm not doing that. I, there's valid reasons not to do it that day. Um, and every, every church is different and every church has a different context. And so I'm not that guy that's going to get up and say, you are just absolutely out of it and sinful if you don't, if you cancel service on Christmas day. Yeah. Um, but, but if it's something as simple as I go to church, uh, on Christmas and really every Sunday and you ask them, do you go to church? Mm-hmm. And they could say yes or no, and you just follow up with, "Do you think it's important to go to church?" And you mm-hmm. you you steer that conversation to the gospel. Or hey, it's Christmas for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love doing the trees. I love doing the presents. But it's about recognizing the birth of Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Who do you think Jesus is? Absolutely. You know. And, and, and so I, I think as we think about the joy and we think about the universal message of the gospel. We, we, we think about the need, we have to think about the need and not just think, act on the need mm-hmm. to share yeah. and, and just recognizing that there is an, a, a much wider door that's open for people right now. Because what I, I think what, what COVID, if we can talk about COVID for a second, mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. brought us with the realization that, that it, it hurts our ability to have community with one another Mm -hmm. Um, and people are just longing for that again. And so what we found as things were beginning to open up more um, is that people were more willing to stop and have a conversation than Mm -hmm. we thought they would be. Right. And and Mm -hmm. so it's just, we, we, we would carry on 10, 15, 20 minute conversations with people when we were walking with our kids just to get out of the house. Yeah. And 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 so in this season, as we think about joy, there's there's joy in sharing the gospel. Yeah. And if for nothing, no other reason, it's there is joy in talking about our Savior. If it's yeah. a testimony of here's what Christ has done for me, mm-hmm. and I have joy in that. And mm-hmm. and what do you think about that? And I, I think those are just those are just opportunities that are right there around us. And, and, and people are ready to have the conversation. I, I really do think they are. Not everybody, of course. Yeah. But I, I think people are ready to talk about about Christ. Um, because ultimately, we have to believe that if the gospel mm-hmm. is universal, that they were created for that anyway. That's right. So, so there is a uh, there is a maybe this is too cliche. But there's a God sized hole in their hearts that they, they were mm-hmm. born with. Yeah. And so, no matter how uh venomous they may seem or opposed to christ they were designed to be mm-hmm. in a relationship with god through jesus christ and we have to remember amen. amen amen what a word for us man that that's thank you for that you know i, I always thought even with the pandemic god is a strategist mm-hmm. he, he, he either he either does it or he allows it meaning that if there's something yeah. that he either allows it or he's he, he does it or he allows it and i just thought about covid but when covid hit how can we not say that it may not be God giving attention to people to say, do you mm-hmm. remember? Do you do you do you remember me? Do you remember who I am? Do you know for yourself yes. that I can save you? Do, you know, it, it seems like every 100 years, if we go back and do the, the, the math, every 100 years, there's something major that happens to the earth. Yep. And, and we're forced in a position to kind of go back to God. And, you know, yeah, we're doing things differently now now we've got internet and, and virtual church and etc but mm-hmm. I'm, th- I'm thinking we want to come back to the community it may not, not get back the way it was but this is mm-hmm. something new because yes. now, now we're faced with putting god's message out there differently we finish this it's going to be on youtube for anyone to see or share or or anyone on facebook can share so i just thinking about COVID, you made me think about that man but joy is born. Man, thank you so yeah. much for that.
message, um, us realizing that this season, uh, there's still a reason to have joy, I think means everything to people who are, you know, going through, maybe not having the monies that they want, maybe not having the people that they desire to be around their, you know, their family this time. I mean, certainly you start thinking about, uh, you know, I lost my parents. They both were very young. And you think about them wanting them to be here. You know, it's a lot of people dealing with that kind of grief. But if you can remember that joy was born, shift your direction away from Santa Claus. (laughs) (laughs) And what I'm going to get under the tree and who can do this and that for me and put our perspective back on the joy that was born. Because I know, and I'm, I can probably speak for you and every other believer, that without Christ in my life, there are so many spaces that I believe I would have died. Mm. At, my, at my own hand, or just at the hand of being silly, or at the hand of doing the wrong yeah. things. But it was his, his joy that always brings us back. So what a message and what a reminder for us, man. And I thank you for coming. and. Sure. Um, if you don't mind, I would love for you to just pray for Emmanuel everywhere so they can hear your voice and and and, and kind of submit that word that you instilled in us from Sunday um, by praying for Emmanuel everywhere right now to close, close us out, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, and before I do, Reverend Joel, I, I, I just I, I want to I want to give just a, a word to Rachel Starts brag on God for some. Absolutely. Go ahead, man. It was an awesome. Brag. The, so as you're as you're sharing uh, what you're sharing, uh, especially as we think about the holidays, I, I just think her brag on God was such a timely message. And so um, I would just encourage anybody who didn't get to see that to to make sure that they go and see that, because yeah. it was just um, it was just a powerful testimony yeah. Yeah. of how gotta, God you gotta, used. You're going to remind me to post that on. I'm going to post that on uh, Emmanuel yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, it, it just, you know, she was talking about her struggle on um, this Thanksgiving and yet God, God used that. God used that as an opportunity to serve uh, someone in a very uh, gospel oriented way in her own complex. And so I, I just think that was just a powerful, powerful testimony. Man. All right, let's, let's pray. Let's pray. Our heavenly father. My all-time favorite verse, uh, Psalm 145, 17. The Lord is righteous in all of his ways and kind in all of his works. And your righteousness and your kindness, Lord, joy was born. And I, I, in my mind's eye, I imagine maybe Jesus. And I'm sitting in a home that's dry, that's heated. And my king was laying in a manger. Hmm. And it's, it's amazing to me, God. It's amazing to me that you humbled yourself in the way that you did. And yes, I know that a precious baby grew up to die, to be punished, to be humiliated for my sins. And the sins of the world. And in that pain. And in that grief. As he was crucified. He would be resurrected. My King Jesus. I know that you live. That you reign on high now. And the joy that I have found in you. Is immeasurable. It's amazing. And I pray that joy. Would be realized and lived out in the midst of every difficult and terrible and grief-stricken circumstance that our community is faced with right now. The pain of loss, the loneliness, the diagnosis that could be terminal. Rumors of wars and wars that are happening. May we, your people, find the joy in the gospel that only you can provide us. And may we share that joy with the people 
that we come into contact with. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We pray these things in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I don't know if you can hear me, Chris. My mic went out. Can you still hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Okay. 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 I, I, my backup is on. So I wasn't sure what happened, but my earpiece went out. Man, thank you again so much for joining mm -hmm. us today. Blessings on you and your family this, this holiday season. Emmanuel, we are so blessed to have you and your mm -hmm. family. And uh, I look forward to continuing to uh, let iron sharpen iron between you and I and just get feed you for information and uh, some of the help you're going to help us with our evangelism program on Emmanuel Everywhere. So I look forward to talking with you again soon, brother. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much. God bless you. Good night, Emmanuel Everywhere. We love y'all.